Hello, my name is Sascha Preibisch, and today I would like to explain how the OAuth client credentials flow works. So here are a few highlights of it. It's a fairly simple case. Um, the grant type is called client credentials. There's no user consent required. So this is the only flow in OAuth where a uh, user is not involved and no user resources are accessed by a client. Sometimes this is also referred to as the machine-to-machine -machine flow because there's no user involved and the type of apps are sometimes also called worker apps. So machine-to-machine, -machine, worker apps, client credentials, it's always referring to the, to, to the same thing. This is not supported in OpenID Connect and I'm just mentioning it to highlight this fact. The most important thing about uh, client credentials flow is that only confidential clients may use this grant type. So a confidential client is a client that is able to maintain a secret. So this eliminates browser-based uh, JavaScript clients and mobile native apps from leveraging this flow because those are referred to as public clients and therefore they cannot keep a secret to themselves. The request and response. Um, this request is always opposed to the token endpoint. It's always uh, form URL encoded and the authorization header includes the uh, base64 encoded client credentials. Uh, they can also be placed in the request body if that is preferred. For some servers, at some authorization service, you have to specify how your client is presenting the uh, client credentials and uh, depending on that you'll either place them in the authorization header or as client ID and client secret in the post body. The only required parameter is grant type equals client credentials and uh, scope is optional. And the response will include the uh, access token, token type, the expiration time or the lifetime expires in, this would be 300 seconds, and the granted scope. And that's it. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Typical use cases are things like uh, a client is requesting a list of available flights. This is like a flight catalog of an airline retrieves the number of active users if there's a dashboard to show active users in the system at this point in time a client may retrieve this number or a client sends a message to a message broker all of these cases are ones where the resource the protected resource is not owned by a user and generally well that's what I just said any protected resources that are not owned by users where a user does not need to provide his permission. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Please leave comments and subscribe if you liked it and would like to not miss the next video.